So there's a lot of hype on YouTube about the new ChatGPT agent. People are saying that it's totally next level and it can do literally anything. But can it? Like, really? So today I want to walk you through several use cases that you would expect something like ChatGPT agent to be able to perform. And I'm going to show you why it's not all it's cracked up to be. So before you go spending money in order to upgrade to plus or pro or one of these other accounts with ChatGPT, watch this video first. So we're going to start here with a basic search of just a flight. And I went into ChatGPT, and down here at the bottom now, you have this opportunity to turn on agent mode. And agent mode is going to allow you to do several things. Search the web. It's going to it'll connect to your Gmail and Google Calendar, sort of. We'll get to that in just a minute. It's actually not as good as you might think. Uh, and then it will perform basically any task. And what it did, what they did was... ChatGPT had a lot of different stuff. They had operator, they had deep research, and they kind of just bundled that stuff together and put it under one new umbrella, called it an agent. Well, the problem is, is that it doesn't really do most of the things that you would expect it to do as an agent. And more importantly, it doesn't do any of the things that you would need it to do to make it a next level agent that could actually act as a basic assistant for you. So to demonstrate that, let me show you here. The first thing I asked it was find the best prices on a round trip ticket from Scottsdale, Arizona to, U to Salt Lake City, Utah between the dates of August 11th and August 13th. And I didn't give it, I could have made it a little more niche and said go to Expedia to find it, or, uh, but I gave it sort of just a, a broad request and it went out and it found several flights. And of course, the cheapest one that it found was Frontier Airlines. It said that price was, the total fare was $72 round trip. This isn't actually true. I went and looked it up myself and the cheapest flights I could find were about double that, 140. So I'm assuming this isn't round trip fare, it's just one way fare, which is how they do it at, at, at Frontier. Um, but it's interesting, if I wanted to check and go see the flights and go go find that, that Google link, if I click on it, all I get is a screen capture of the, uh, of the browser that it was using when it went to search for the fares. And so I can't actually go where it was telling me to go and find that information. But it did find a relatively cheap flight from Scottsdale to uh, Salt Lake City. So I thought, okay, let's do the next level and let's say go ahead and book the flight for me. And of course, it opened up its little browser and it started running through its processes. And then uh, as it got to this, it, as it got to the point where it needed some human interaction, it stopped and it said, hey, a human verif verification prompt has appeared on Frontier sites and I'm able to complete it. Please take over mode. Uh, please use takeover mode. Press and hold the button to confirm you're a human. Once that's done, let me know and I'll continue to book the flights. I thought, OK, let's do that. And I click take over. And whoa, I get this weird system message. Uh, ChatGPT won't take screenshots. Your browser session will be saved. But this is the important one. This may put your data at risk. Signing ChatGPT into websites can expose your data to malicious sites. Now, I'm getting ready to put credit card information in or give ChatGPT credit card information so that it can then log me in and book a flight for me. Who in their right mind would do this? This is like, this is the catch-all that ChatGPT is using right now so that when people's data gets stolen, because it's going to, that they have plausible deniability and they say, well, we told you that this was dangerous. We told you that you shouldn't be doing this, but you decided to do it anyway. It's like, that's insane. Absolutely insane. So if you know you can't, at this point, you can't use it for any actual transactions. You can just really use it for research, which is fine, but there are other sites that will already do that. Perplexity is probably the best one. And so I went in, I fed it the same prompt. Uh, you want to go to Scottsdale from August 11th to August 13th. And it found all of the same information. It even gave me JAX. So JAX is like a, a semi-private airplane. So if you don't want to go to uh, Sky Harbor Airport in Scottsdale and you want to go to the little private airport, you can do that. And for about 500 bucks, they'll give you a first class experience, a semi-private experience. And I haven't flown on them yet, but it looks kind of cool. But again, roughly the same ticket prices. Frontier is 62 to 99, 90 to 122. But what's cool is it gives me all of the links to the sites. So if I want to go to Expedia, and check for the flights, I can do that. It links me right to it. 
and I could see, as I said before, it's $181. It's not 72, but that being, that being said, you, you can, you get a lot more by using just regular perplexity. It's also a lot faster. So with ChatGPT, this first process took me about 10 minutes for it to go because it shows you how it's tracking through the sites. Uh, this took me, I can't remember how long it was. It was probably three minutes for it to come back and get me this information. So other than being able to do basic stuff that any GPT or any LLM that's connected to the internet can do, there's not much use for it doing something like booking flights. So let's try something different. Let's have it do some deep research for us and come up and compile a report for us. Maybe this is something that you would want to use for your company or you're getting ready to give a presentation and you want it to go do a bunch of information gathering for you and kind of compile it into a nice report that you can then go in and modify. Okay, so at this point, you may be feeling a little overwhelmed at the realization that this whole AI agent thing isn't quite as easy as you thought it would be. Well, I got some good news for you. It can be. You see, the engineering team at Motion has spent years designing the most useful work tool for the 21st century, and they already have AI agents, exactly like the one I'm showing you, built directly into their platform that their engineering team can customize to fit your company's unique needs. So if you want a simple and friction-free way to add AI agents to your business, click on the link in the description for a free trial to test Motion out for yourself. And for everyone else, Let's get back to the episode. So I gave it a crazy prompt here. I said, produce a detailed analysis of global legal regimes governing cross-border data transfers and local localization requirements with a focus on their implication for SaaS and cloud infrastructure. I don't even know what any of that it means. I actually came down here and when I did my request, I just picked one that ChatGPT said, hey, I can do a report for you on this. And it worked for about 12 seconds trying to figure out what it was going to do. And then 23 minutes later, I had a report. Now, granted, I, 23 minutes to do a detailed report like this is pretty solid. I think we live in this era where we expect everything to be instantaneous, and it just isn't, right? If we can get something, a detailed report like this down to 23 minutes, kudos. Let's, let's do it. But as you come down here, you'll see this looks a lot like ChatGPT deep research, right? It looks, a, it's the same formula because I use deep research a lot when I'm doing uh, guest interviews and things like that. And I want to get a report back of who the person is that I'm going to be talking to. And it has all the links. So that's nice. Ex exactly what you would expect with deep research. Then we scroll down here and we start to look at some of the designs that it's created. So I come down, this isn't bad. Gives me a nice little uh, database. We come down here, but look at the quality of the images that it created for this research. It just, I don't know if it just pulled them off the internet or if it actually created these manually, but these are junk. You would not, in a professional environment, there's no way you would want to be using uh, images like this in some sort of report that you're putting out. At least not, at least I wouldn't, right? But then again, what value is this really beyond doing deep research? So I went over again to perplexity and I give it the same prompt, do the same analysis. Look at what it came back with. Look at these beautiful graphs that it created that showcase what it's talking about. I mean, the, the research, I read through it, the research is roughly the same. You're getting almost exactly the same sort of research. There's slight variations with it, of course, but in terms of the quality of the research, I would give both of them the same grade. But the quality of the images and other things that you get. In addition, I can come up here and I'm using Perplex Perplexity Labs for this. So this is 20 bucks a month. Um, if I come over, look at assets, I have all of the assets laid out. I can download any one of them. I've got all of the actual data. Like the, it looks like this is uh, JavaScript. I'm not a coder, so I'm not real sure. But all of that's in there. And then there's an executive summary down here as well, which is just a ton more than you get with ChatGPT agent. And so again, if I got to choose one over the other, I'm not using the agent. I'm just going to go to perplexity and use perplexity labs and have it generate me a beautiful, beautiful images and a really solid, complete report of the analysis that I was looking for. So again, that's no good. So let's try one more. I thought this is kind of cool. So one of the things that it will let you do 
when you're in agent mode is it'll allow you to connect your Gmail and your Google Calendar. So I thought, okay, maybe here's something where I could actually have this program do something for me, like go and research my calendar and find some time. So I gave it a very simple prompt. I said, hey, find me an hour this week that I can meet my friend Mike for drinks. Pick an afternoon where I have no meetings booked. Pretty simple and straightforward. The second I click go, that another pop-up comes up. And it said, untrusted sites can obtain your data. Agent mode is designed uh, to respect your privacy, but malicious sites may trick it into sharing your data uh, from connectors. And I thought, all right, I got to learn more about this. What's going on? So I clicked the learn more. And here's the example that it gives. It says, you may want the agent to do something seemingly safe, like search for restaurants to organize a group dinner with some friends. So you ask the agent to look in your calendar uh, and a recent email thread to decide on a place that will work for anyone. While the agent is researching restaurants, it may access blog posts where the comments section contains malicious comments attempting to trick the agent into taking action it didn't intend. This uh, is the prompt injection attack. So essentially, as it's reading through, someone may have stuck something into the comments on some random blog site that it's reviewing that actually taps into your accounts. It goes on to say, in this example, the malicious comment content may attempt to instruct the agent to check your Gmail for some sensitive data, such as passwords, reset codes, and may further instruct the agent to make requests to some malicious website where the request provider or provides a code in the URL, effectively allowing the attacker to obtain this critical data. So, again, why would anyone use this? It makes no logical sense. And especially when you know you can go build something inside of some other workflow like N8N or I think what with some of the other a string where you actually have your data semi protected in there, like you're never 100% secure, right? But you ought to be able to connect to your Google and Gmail and not worry about your agent just coming in and running roughshod and stealing all of your data, stealing your passwords, stealing your credit card information. I mean, I... I do not use this. That's all I'm going to say is do not use this until they get this fixed and they figure out how to protect your information when the chat when the chat agent is out looking. Do not give it access to this sensitive data because what's going to happen is somebody's going to get burned and they're going to get burned in a big way and they're going to sign in one day and find out that their entire Gmail has been hijacked, their Stripe account has been hijacked, their bank account has been drained and it's going to be a nightmare. And so again, there's a lot of hype around this. Just be very careful. Do not assume that these companies have your best interests at heart. Here's what I think happened. I think that ChatGPT needed to show, OpenAI needed to show some advancement because they're waiting for ChatGPT 5 to come out. I think they wanted to show that they were doing something and that they were actively trying to be players in the AI agent space. And so they took a couple of things they'd already created with uh, deep research and with operator. They stuck them together and they said, hey, now we've got an AI agent that can do all kinds of stuff for you, like make purchases online and, and book stuff on your calendar. Except nobody in their right mind would ever do that using this product. So again, I know it's kind of harsh, but I just want to warn you, I want to prepare you guys and caution you against doing this. This is the Wild West right now, the Wild West. Nobody knows where this is going, and no, the guardrails are kind of off. The safety measures are not in place, and they're straight up telling you that when you try and use this to do anything other than general research. So you've been warned. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll talk to you soon.